Welcome to Hell, Feet Zeos Pantera. Um, I would like to put a warning at the beginning of this video. It's probably going to be very long and may cause the opposite of erectile dysfunction. Because essentially the IFI has made Viagra in box form. So, I've got quite the selection here of both headphones, balanced, unbalanced, and three pair of electrostats. I've got my L700s, my 207 Ultras, and a borrowed set of King Sound HO3s. We've got both the iESL and the iCan Pro, which are basically IFI's flagship, and they're not cheap. And we're gonna go into this review, and I don't know if I'm ready, honestly. I just, I've been, cr you know when you cram for a test, you know everything, like one minute before they hand you the piece of paper. Well, this is three minutes after they've handed me the piece of paper. So let's see, where do I start? I, I guess there. Okay. Ugh. Ugh. This is the IESL. Those of you who remember my Woo Wee review will remember I had a unit that you plug, or I have a unit, actually it's over there. Use it on my all day, every day desk. You plug a speaker amplifier into it and you get uh, the connection for an electrostatic headphone and you're good. This is slightly more complicated than that. Big silicone pad on the bottom. Not 100% a fan of this design for a foot. Instead of, you know, four feet, it's a giant silicone isolation pad. And it's great, except for the fact that it's, a, it's it, it, not on this surface, because I've got a mouse pad on foam, but on a hard surface, it's sort of slimy. It sort of like wiggles around, and this one's got like a little bit of a bump right there, and you could just, it just sort of rotates. It sort of auto rotates. Like I had a thing on it, and it was pulling and it was turning. So, build. Very nice aluminum box. I think it's aluminum. Honestly, it could be made out of titanium. I can't tell the difference at this point. Uh, can we get to the to the front, to those fronts in a bit? Let's look at the back. <coughs> it's much easier. Speaker ins, le uh, they labeled, yes. Left, right, left, right, outs. A four pin balanced input i.e. what you'd see uh, on your headphone plug, like here. Like, look, ooh, ooh, that looks the same. You get a DC input, five to nine volts at a half an amp, and you get an ESL link, which looks like an HDMI connector because, well, it is, but it's not. It's wired differently, so you can't, I don't think you could just use an HDMI cable. And this is used to connect to that, which I, I guess we're gonna do the, the the, the hole all around, so take notes. So basically, let's look at the front. You get this big, you get knobs. Oh my fucking God, you get knobs. You get four knobs each. You get two units, that's eight knobs. All the knobs. It's like Ron Jeremy in here. He just wants to play with all the knobs. I have one thing to say before I go, is that you could read all these labelings perfectly fine, except when you turn them like that and put it on a black surface. And now it's invisible. And I had to get my flashlight out to light it up or lift it, or, so it's just, it's just the way the grain of the metal works. It looks great looking at it. And then you start getting lower, it's like, oh, it's still all right, and then the little black surface done. There's no reflectivity left. How? It's like a magic eye. Anyway. Left knob is to choose the input from the back. What's gonna power your electrostatics? Cause that's this thing's job is to push electrostatics. Also, it happens to have a dynamic headphone input. So you can plug a balanced set of headphones into this so you could do electrostats custom or pro, which is modern stacks, or there's a normal output for older stacks that use half voltage, and you've got a dynamic output, so you can use your speaker amp to push regular balanced headphones, and and, and then you also, okay, so the, the four options are off, which is the units off, ICANN, which is this link, which uh, connects 
the Pro here, which is a crazy headphone amp we're going to talk about in a second, to this to power your stacks, or well, they actually have a list in the book. There's stacks, there's costs, which you need to get an adapter to push the cost, because I have the cost, but I don't have the adapter. There's the King Sounds, there's the original Orpheus, if you want to set it to that, and we'll, we'll get to why that is. So, off, I can, balanced, and speaker. Those are your four choices. This is AC termination, which has off normal pro and pro, pro plus normal. And I thought that was very important, and then I started reading the manual, and it's like, well, it shows where the AC termination goes. If you want it to be off, you want it to be normal, do you want it to be pro or pro and normal? And it turns out, it's, it's like, it's one of those switches that is there because someone asked IFI to put it there, and IFI did, and they basically say in the manual, sometimes things might sound different. So here you go. They get... Again, IFI, the way they design things is they put a big jar of suggestions out, and when it fills up, they pour them out and install all of them. So, this you could leave off, it doesn't affect anything. We'll get to it, we'll get to actually hooking these up because you can see there's a, a goddamn calamity happening here. Again, you got the normal output for older stacks style things with low voltage, 270 volts or 230 volt, and the higher one. The custom pro so this is fixed the dynamic doesn't get affected by this switch or this switch it's just basically a power pass through then you got this switch which is the bias change and this has a bunch of high voltages written on it which makes you scared to death but you have to realize that electrostatics use a lot of <laughs> a lot there's a lot that makes those go because the lowest setting here is 500 volts then 540 which is King Sound, then 580, which is most modern stacks, and I think the uh, costs also. Then there's 600, 620, and 640. And according to the book, 640 isn't even used yet. It's like future use. So you could set it all the way up to like electrocute your dog voltages. We're leaving it on 580 because we're using stacks, and the King Sounds have a, an issue on this, but won't worry about we won't worry about that. I just want 580. Don't blow up my L700s. Thank you. The final knob is an impedance selector. Now this is not to select the impedance of your headphones. Not, this is to set what these are seeing from the powering amplifiers. One of my problems with the Wu Wii was I plugged it into a couple amps and they would start freaking the fuck out. Like little shitty T amps and they would just go, uh, uh, I don't know what I'm doing because it's not a, uh, the, the Wu Wii is not a speaker. And when I was doing like the SA50 and the SA, they were clipping, they were just going into a clip and they were shutting off because the impedance wasn't, it was just invisible to, it was like running it on nothingness. So what this has is a switch to let you pick how much load is being taken from the amplifiers. And all of these count as amplifiers. The balance, here's an amp, I'm gonna be using this and this and my base X, and then this is gonna feed and this will determine the actual load being like shown to these amplifiers uh it, the the highest load because remember impedance works backwards the highest load is 16 which is pretty good you're not going to find many headphones and not even some speakers that do that so that's the highest load you can get 24 64 and 96 and the book recommends you leave it at the least impedance and see how that works because the less stress you put on the amplifier the better and, you know, if you took that base X and you wired up an 8-ohm speaker, that's fine. If you wired some in series and made it 16 ohms, it'd be super easy. You wouldn't even care, but you could affect the sound. But, uh, yeah, so they recommend you start with the least impedance, which is 96. Then go to the most impedance, which is 16. And there's a volume discrepancy, too. It's quiet, still quiet. Now it's getting loud, and now it's fucking loud because it's drawing more from the amplifier. Okay, I would love to take this cover off, but it's such a, it's not like, it's not like I just take the cover off, I have to like extract the back, but there's things and stuff and words and gold, looks like a picture of a flying lion or something in there, I, ooh, so find the internal pictures of this would be great. Let's put you over here for a second. Let's move on to this, which looks near identical. 
I could tell IFI spent a lot of time researching how to build one of these, and when they said, all right, we got the fascia, all right, fuck it, both of them. So, the iCan Pro, again, big silicone base at the bottom. By the way, this says uh, General Electric 5670, because that's the tubes that are in this. This is insane. But it's not insane in like the cut yourself with glass and eat your own face. Insane. It's insane like how do they do that? <gasps> Chewbacca shut up for a review. Hi baby boots. You look cute in the sunshine. Now, I'm gonna just hold on. I'm gonna make sure all my knobs are <sighs> okay. We'll start at the back. Inputs. And I have some caps on here still. Balanced inputs. This is not a DAC. This is just a headphone amplifier. <laughs> let me, let me, hold on. Just a headphone amplifier. Big fucking air quotes. Because this thing costs, well, it's not like audio show money where this is the cost of a, of a nice plug for the wall, but it's still probably the most expensive one I've reviewed. I gotta think back on my records now. Balanced inputs, three pair of RCA unbalanced inputs, balanced outputs, one set of unbalanced outputs, a DC loop out, which is to jump power to another unit, but not that one, because that one's gonna use the ESL link, and then you get your input, which is a 15 volt, four amp. My baby puts, yes. Just to break everything. She's just breaking everything. So. Um, the tubes, by the way, are located right there. They're laying down, and you got a little bit of light through this magnifying glass, and ooh. This unit gets hot, the ESL does not get hot. So, if you buy the stack, and the stack is an option, make sure this is on top. Front of the iCan Pro. Power button. That doesn't have a power button, that literally switches to off, and it's off. This is a power button. Then it has un the same four ways here. Inputs one, two, three, and balance. So they're RCA, 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 XLR balance, which we will be hooking up along with an RCA because I'm gonna speed that and this. And Okay, the X base switch four way. Now I'm gonna point something out. This is not a digital unit in any way, shape, or form. There's no DAC in it. And these two switches, which one is X base and one is 3D, there's no digital signal processing, DSP, none of that. These are all analog and they tout that. And that's very hard to do all analog. It's real easy to make a base boost. It's just not just like, oh, and then a DSP switch. So from my readings, of course I had to know the specifics of it. You have off, and off, which is, thank God. And I love IFI switches. You'll know from my, um, the ICANN, it was, it was the micro, but it was actually huge, it's like basically this size, that the switches make the IFI products. And these are a little bit weirder, and I'm not gonna say I enjoy them as much. I think I might enjoy the ones on the little portable unit, but uh, I respect what the hell they're doing because you get a, it says off 10 hertz, 20 hertz, and 40 hertz, and that, doesn't make any sense because when you read the manual, it basically says off is no bass boost. It's solid and clean and direct. 10 hertz will bump anything below 40 up. 20 hertz will bump anything below 80 up. And 40 hertz will bump anything below 160 up. So I don't know why they're labeled that way, but that's what I've been told. We'll skip that switch for now. We'll go to this cacophony in the middle of outputs no here's a volume knob we're gonna skip all that here's a volume knob look it's a volume knob it turns and there's a remote control that makes a turn by the way look at the uh this is what i was talking about in my review of the shit freya is that usually the expensive things come with like crappy remotes and i understand why ifi has done this because this is all they need they have up and down there's not even power it's just up and down they should have power on this, they don't. So, I mean, you're probably gonna take this remote and you're gonna teach your Logitech or other learning remote these com combinations. Like here, learn this and learn this and you're gonna take this and throw it in a drawer. 
So we get a volume knob that's well indicated actually. You got the dot and a line. All these knobs actually, I don't have to complain about the knobs too much. This gut knob will work backwards, will work out and in. This knob is the 3D sound. Now, it has four positions also. Off, which is direct, 30 slash plus, 60 slash 30 plus, and 90 slash 60 plus. Hold on. So, fully analog crossfeed. It's not DSP, it's, it's, a, it's an adjustment. Off is direct. And then the, the two, the slash, 30 slash plus. One is specifically for what it's doing for headphones, and the other is specifically for what it's doing with the pet, with the outputs here and speakers, because this is a preamp, not just a headphone amplifier. So you, you set it to off and everything's normal. You set it to 30, and what it's supposed to do is make it sound like your, you have speakers here, 30 degrees apart from you. And then the next one is 60, which is equilateral triangle, and that's what it's supposed to sound like. And the last one is 90, which is like crazy wide bullshit, and that's for headphones. Then when you plug in, then you have it not headphones, and it's output into this, it's just slightly wider than, because you have a speaker set up however you have, but it's a slightly wider spec, then a plus 30 spec, then a plus 60 spec. So sound stage increase, again, all analog. Here's your gain switch. Little thing here, zero, nine, and 18. So zero is where you start. Uh, I've been finding leaving it on nine is pretty good, and 18 is if you have really hard to drive bullshit. This switch here engages or disengages the tube. Just like the shit Freya, you have direct mode where it's off. It's just, it's not including the tubes in any part of it. And when you switch this on, and then you get the JFET with the tube pre's. And then you switch this on plus, and it's a little picture of a tube with a plus. And that's when you really have, like, that's full tube usage. And it's like, ooh, tubes exist in this. By the way, I'm a little upset that when you put this down all the way, it, the, the gauge keeps going. Just, just the slightest bit upset that it doesn't like, and then they mark it zero. Is it the same on top? No. And the top goes past. Maybe I could pull this off. She yanked this off. It needs to be rotated. Okay. The middle bit. Okay, you've got, this is the only one that makes sense. Okay, balanced, four pin, perfect. Then you get another balanced, three and a half millimeter balanced. And I asked uh, IFI about this. And they're like, two and a half millimeter sucks. And I concur, it's too small a format and it's too easy to break. But the new one, 4.4 millimeter, no one's got it, and it's giant, and why bother if you have 4.4 millimeter? So there is a balanced 3.5 millimeter here that you'll probably never use, and you never find a headphone cable for it, you don't have to custom make something for it. That's fine. Then over here, 3.5 millimeter single-ended. So standard IEMs or something, that's what you use. That's not saying there isn't a quarter inch jack because the, even though these are labeled left and right and take an XLR, they each have a stereo quarter inch and you're supposed to use the right one like this to use a headphone. Now, on top of that, if you don't know, there are headphones, some people wire them up with full XLRs for each side, which even I'm not that crazy. You know, I do have quarter inch for left and right, but that won't work here because the way this is wired internally, and I don't understand this, you can get your headphones wired with two quarter inch jacks in stereo, and then this will be both negatives, and then this will be both positives. It's very, very strange. I'm sure someone out there is watching this video and goes, oh yeah, absolutely, that's 100% how they do that. But I'm just looking at it going, what? Okay, so we've got connections. Did we talk about everything? I think we talked about everything. Because we have to hook this shit back up. Speaking of shit, Chewbacca just took one. Um, it stinks. This is the one that gets hot. This has to be on top. Now, if you buy just the IESL, 
Oh, I like when I have errors. If you buy just the IESL, there is a small power plug that comes with it for this, just to give this some power. And the actual headphone, the actual electrostats are being powered by whatever source you're inputting. So using this and this in conjunction, this powers this through this, no matter what your input's set on. Are we following this already? All right, keep following me. We're now going to plug in that. Uh, I've built this cable because I tried to buy one online and I couldn't find it. It's basically just a, a balanced extension. And I've got it currently plugged into my dark voice through an adapter so that I could push some dark voice single-ended tubiness into this. And that's fine. And we'll switch out to the class A over there. Then this is right channel and the inputs are here and the right channel's here. Here, by the way, love these mica cables. Future Zeos, link these mica cables in the description. Will do. Past Zeos, who's currently bathing in the smell of Chewbacca poo. What would a review be without Chewbacca poo? Now, I should mention that when you have speaker inputs coming from an amp, a speaker amp, and you have the output sucked up. They will work in every setting. The outputs will be outputting in every setting except for the actual speaker setting. So when you want to listen to your electro stats, you go click, 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 and then your speaker shut off. So even with this unit completely turned off, these should be passing out to speakers. Now let's hook up to the next baby. And we stack that right on top. And you can see they're the exact same case. And it's got this little cutout here. And it's going to go boom. And then we're going to hook up our link and then we need to hook up here is the cable for the IESL we do not need that because we're hooking this up and it's got to pass through through the ISL did I just click on no I just clicked for fun now we're gonna do a set of RCA's which is basically the old DAC then we're gonna hook up our balance connection and it's coming from my XDA2 down here is there anything else I'm missing? Because I, I don't even know anymore. Okay, and I had put this stuff up on the uh, thing, but the top will keep, see how it's slowly rotating? Because the silicone is slightly slippery. So yeah, we've got that. Volume's down, everything's set to where I like it. Good, good. Um, okay, let's turn on the ICANN and I'll pick it up so you can see. That is really cool because that's microscopic holes punched through the metal to actually have the LED light come through. And they both have that. And there's many color indications of what's going on and I would explain it, but I don't have the time in the day. I don't have the time in the day. I can look at that wallpaper though and then, oh look, now it's red. And wait, oh I have it set to two plus. I shouldn't have set the two plus. Oh, it's it to white. So essentially right now, there's clicking going on. We have got a headphone. It's just a headphone amp right now. That's all it's doing. Let's grab a set of headphones. How about you? You look pretty. Volume down. Okay, we're gonna plug you into balanced. Uh, no effects on, no tube, no extra gain. We're set to the balanced output or balanced input. So that's there. Put this on, turn up my knob. Foo Fighters sounds like ass on anything. It's Bob and Earl Harlem Shuffle. That's how that starts. It's not jump around. And on low, and this thing, I should tell you the power specs on this. The single ended output. So when you plug in the quarter inch, or when you plug in the three and a half millimeter, it's 4.8 watts, I believe, a, ch a channel. I believe a channel. I believe a channel. When you plug in balanced, like we currently are, with my very efficient and lovely, and now vintage, because I don't think they sell the 2000Xs anymore. Do they? Have they replaced them yet? But these are super efficient, so I'm on, like, the lowest possible gain, and I go to, like, 930, like, there. And that's as loud as these should ever need to go. Because the balanced output on this, on the highest gain, is fucking 14 watts a channel! Great. 
I actually have the bass boost all the way up. That explains why that sounded like that. That's, so I was wondering like, wow, these sound really bassy, but no, okay, one. And I, I have no qualms about giving 2000X's the slightest bass boost, just the Because they're a little bass light, and you don't get any distortion with any of these switches because these units cost so fucking much, they better not. So yeah, it's just, it's just, that's just, I put it up to the 20 hertz section, which means 80 and below is boosted. And that's perfect for these. And oh, by the way, about like, oh, I'm like a 1022, which is like 10 o'clock, a little bit more 10 than that. And these are as loud as I'd ever want to play these headphones on the lowest gain setting. If you plug into the three and a half millimeter or the quarter inch, the IEM match circuitry kicks on, which if you know anything about IFI products, which you, I'm assuming you don't because you come in here and you don't know nothing, uh, they have a thing where it'll determine the impedance of your very efficient IEMs and will adjust for that. And I tested that, not with IEMs because those are impossible to put on on stream, but I got out these, which are my BNOH6s, which you have to do this. And then look, I'm gonna plug it in there. And now we're gonna, seriously, look how pretty that is though. I don't mind when that falls off because I can just see how pretty it is. So now on the lowest gain, I'm at like noon, a little past noon. Once you go, by the, the, the rule of thumb, and I knew this before I read it in their book, an, amplifi an amplifier knob, if it goes from there to there, once you're around noon, that's happy. If you have to go beyond noon a little bit, that's fine. If you're like finding yourself at like three quarters to 80% of the gain of the unit, and you have a gain switch, bump it up. So I'm going past noon. So I'm going to bump it up to, to plus nine. And you hear click and click back on. So now noon is as loud as I ever want to play these on the plus nine. I'm gonna take off the bass boost that does not need those. Let's try sound stage. And it definitely, it's like turning a knob and it's doing this to the sound. It works better on some headphones than others. Some headphones, you don't need it. What a good selection of music is randomly coming on. I'm gonna leave that plugged in for a second because I wanna show you something and maybe freak this out. Because as much tower, tower as I'm pouting, power as I'm touting, with 14 watts for balanced, that 4.8 watts for unbalanced um, is about to be tested. Because anything Mark III is stupid. Clicking over to high gain because it's gonna need it. Come on. Maxed. I've now maxed the unit out on the highest gain. On any Omori cones, so it's not a super loud track, but it's still. I don't know what's wrong with these headphones. And it's something. What's wrong with you? Why? I have to basically plug these into that to make them sound correct. Because that will output 8 watts a channel at 50 ohms. 50 ohms, yes. And. I don't think this will push that much through single-ended. If I rip these apart and make them balanced, this would be the solution. 14 would be the solution. But right now, here, loud, loud. Done. She's like clipped out. She's like, I can't handle this. I'm resetting everything. Fuck all you people. So that just goes to prove that no matter how much you spend, you're not powering the T450s right. Actually, these are the T20s because I'm tired of wearing the T50s and these have better low end. So that was just my little demonstration of that. Let's Odyssey. Let's put this back down to nine. So less stupid gain. We're volume down. Let's plug that in. 
actually freaked it out with T20s. And that's plenty loud. Maybe even go low gain. Maybe even go low gain. And it does take a second because it's just like, what am I doing? Okay. Now I'm on balanced input, which is from that. Now if I wanted to hear that instead, and now I'm hearing that, that it, DAC. Honestly, and I I read in the book, and I know this isn't a balanced headphone, but switching from the balanced to an unbalanced input still uses the balanced headphone amp. There's no, you know, loss or it doesn't switch over to a different mode. So you get all the benefits of balance, i.e., 14 watts a channel, and all the separation. It just is taking it. All right, this is a bad song too. Imagine Dragon. All these. Just, I like Imagine Dragons, but you need to go back in the studio and have someone beat the producer's ass. Please. Pink Floyd. God, they're recorded terribly. That's a joke. Please don't ban me from the internet. Mother. See, now I'm on low gain, and Mother is a low recording or well recorded song, and I'm up past 12, 1 o'clock. What do I want to add to this? I mean, these are, these are, by the way, the um, LCD 2Cs, the classics. So the cheapest set of Odysseys you could buy. No phasers, and they are still excellent. I don't, I don't want to add nothing. All right, I do want to add something, all right? I want to add the tubes. So here's what happens. You get to choose mid-tubes or full-tubes. I'm just going to say go full-tubes. And are playing full tubes. You heard the music stop. Um, because the tubes had been warmed up. If the tubes had not been warmed up, if I didn't turn this unit on with the tubes, I would have switched it. Nothing would have happened. It would have started blinking. I'm warming up the tubes. I'm warming up the tubes. It would still be playing on the solid state end. I'm warming up the tubes. Okay, the tubes are just about ready. Click. Music stops. Does some shit. Now you're listening to tubes. So now I'm listening to these single-ended tubes. And on top of having tube sound, which it does, beautiful, warm, just, it, you could tell it's a tube. It's not so clean that it's like, oh, I can't tell. It, it, there's a sound difference because it's literally a switch. No tubes. Tubes. No things for you. Mother's gonna, oh, I don't know the words to, to mother and I apologize. I will learn them so I could sing terribly along with it. Until you get home, until you get in. See, I was gonna say, ah, oh, fuck. Ruined everything. So now, on top of this being tubes, like legitimately tubes are playing, we also get the analog 3D sound and bass boost. We could touch all the things. So let's see, I just want all the, all the 3D surround and I want all the bass boost. And that's almost an unlistenable amount of just change. Like, what are we listening to? Sounds behind me, and the, the low end is like, whoa, because there's way too much low end boost, especially for these headphones. If I wanted to, if I wanted to just play, I would do one click of this and one click of that, and then tubes, and then wow. It just sounds, it's a di you're paying for a different experience from what you're used to. You buy an X7S, and you plug a headphone in, and that's what you get. You plug it by a tube, and you plug it in, and that's what you get. So, you buy this, and you plug it in, and then you get what you get by flipping switches and turning knobs, and then, oh, there's four, six, what, I mean, is it four? I forgot how to do that, where it multiplies how many different possible combinations there are. Because there's solid state with four types of bass, then there's solid state with four types of bass, and then there's four different levels of three surround, and then you go switch it to a JFET tube, which is just a little, little bit of tube, little, and then for, it's, oh my god. This is when you're bored, when you have all the headphones you need, and you buy this. And then you can play. It's just playing. Music is fun. None of you people need your headphones, need your music for a very important life or death things. No, it's just all fun, so just have fun. It's very expensive fun. 
so was all the work I did to my car, and I totally didn't need that. No one needs 500 crank horsepower, I, but I did, sort of. No, I didn't, but it's fucking fun. Ooh. Dexter OST, Oliver. From season eight. Ugh, season eight. Did it really go for eight seasons? I guess it did. I, I blanked out after, like, the fourth one. The one with Lumen was still good, even though then it just went woo, downhill. Just straight downhill. That bitch in the last season. Get a bottle of hair dye. They're looking for a blonde that looks just like you. Make yourself a brunette. Did, all right, um, I just, might just be loving these headphones too much right now. So let's disable things. Leave the tube on. And now let's swap over to an actual balanced set of headphones. I.e., I have the wire from Periapt. And I've got the HD 660s. And those are my pair. Because I bought them. Because they're stupid. And I've even taken a magic marker and made that side blue. And that side red. Because I'm stupid. Well, that's a little bit too Dragon Ball Z for me. FKA Twigs. Lights on. I like to point out... That honestly being able to go from like, okay, now listen to an unbalanced old deck and the balanced Emotiva XDA2 with just like a click, click, I hear no difference. That's like I've studied it because I had two hours leading up to this review just fucking with wires. So take your pick. If you have a balance, use balance. If you don't have balance, doesn't matter. Use this, fine. Oh, now I'm still on full tube. I'm gonna put it to the JFET setting. It'll click off, no sound. Now it's back on. A little bit of a volume increase when it goes off of the full tube mode. Let's say you know the tubes are working because they can't quite get the tubes right. And they're new old stock, so it's, it's I'm sure they match pairs. And by the way, I'm still in the lowest possible gain. So these are 150 ohm, which is not crazy. Way more efficient than the 600s. And I'm on the lowest gain, and it's just 12 o'clock. It's just an experience. Full solid state, which clicks over slightly faster than the other ones, maybe. You could definitely hear when it goes to solid state, it clears it up. It's just, okay, now it's clear. But, you know, tubes aren't, the whole point of tubes is that you don't want it to be accurate and clear and perfectly there. You want it to sort of relax. Just fucking relax. Fucking relax. That's what tubes are about. They're about fucking relax. I even asked my friend about a set of tubifiers for my living room to put little baby monoblock tubifiers. Just because I want to fucking relax sometimes. I'm not listening to the speakers to be super analytical. So, okay. It's time to, uh... <laughs> Headphone amps are expensive when they're good and good when they're expensive. Okay. We might be done with this side of the table. This side of the table. Electrostats. Now, I'm not going to bother. I'm going to review these King Sounds uh, in an upcoming... This was loaned to me by IFI because they wanted me to have a set that wasn't just stacks to try in this. And I'm glad they loaned it to me, because I'm going to shit all over those. We'll start with the 207 Ultras, just because they don't get enough play in my room. I'm volume down, volume down, volume down, because now there's no volume control except for this when I have it set to I can. Oh, by the way, for some reason, the single pin's at the bottom on this, it's, so it's upside down from every other stack stamp. So, I'm going to leave the voltage bias, AC voltage off, we're in off, I'm going to set it to I can. So now this unit, through that HDMI cable, and nothing else is going to power my sex. And in case they blow up, I want them on my head when they blow up. Okay, so now that... This is set correctly to 580 volts. Double check. 580 is where you want it for stacks, which is most times. This off because I don't have to do anything. Off, off. No tube. 
Balanced input. Lowest gain, not recommended. Nine, I found, is pretty damn good for these. So wait for it to click on electrostatics. And I could also switch between the two different DACs now. When I trust you, we could do it with lights on. All right, I'm going to set this higher, 24, which increases the volume gain, which is why I lowered it, then turn that. Oh, things and stuff are happening. Uh, electrostatics. I love all of you, babies. I love all of you. I love you. I love you. You blew it up, but I love you anyway. Love you. And you guys are new and I borrowed, but... But fuck everything but electrostatics. In the ass. Now. Oh, let's okay. We're listening to, to the to this. Let's get this volume at half. Now balanced input, which would be this. And I could tell you that's a single-ended, cheap-ish tube amp because the sound goes. Roop. Now speaker amp. And all speaker amps are basically balanced. So now I have. A knob that can now I have an amplifier now I have a switch a knob that is letting me push my electrostatics either with this that or that because it's here listen that's all three they're just all So if you ever wanted to test, and I'm gonna I'm gonna lower the volume with Fubar just because this way I only have one volume. Because now that I've got this going, I could I could shut the whole thing off. It shuts off and on. It turns on instantly. It's not like it's got to warm up. You can just turn it off, turn it back on. Which by the way, when you turn off the iFi iCam Pro when it's hooked up with the thing, then the power just stops to this because it's the only thing powering this. So it's it's all one unit. So now that I have everything else hooked up, the volume controls are all away. That's a volume control, that's a volume control, and this is a volume control. And I'm gonna probably take it off the tubes in a second after I analyze it for this review and then plug it back into the Class A. Because that was the one thing I tried to do with the Wii. Because now we're on the IASL. What I tried to do with the Wii was build a cable that let me use my Jotunheim, which is high power, with eight watts channel it claims to be in balance. And I tried to get that to wire up and, and control and power the Wii. This is much smaller than the Wii, and I think more efficient because I'm just getting, it's working beautifully, even with just a dark voice. And the dark voice is up probably two o'clock. No distortion. I've got the, uh, the gain setting. Actually, for like the tube, like if you're doing what I'm doing, which I don't know if anyone's doing what I'm doing, where you're putting a load, what load do you want the amp to see? Well, that's a tube amp. That means the more load, the better or the worse, whatever. Point is you play with it and see what sounds the most tuby. So let's undo the volume downs here. Yeah, I was liking 24 ohms being shown to that. It's definitely not as wide as I'd like it to be. And then if I want that, I just... I see I can, that's balance. That's a speaker amp. Leonard Skinner, by the way. Just so you gotta know. Oof. 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 So I got filter, white like that. And it's Electrostats, and it's my seven, 207 Ultras, and there's low end for days. And you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna set this to the ICAN. So now this is powering them. And now we're gonna put up a bass boost. Because it works. So that's under 80 boost, and I want to die wearing these. I can't play too much, you're definitely hearing it. Nine Inch Nails, somewhat damaged instrumental. Okay, let's, let's tone the bass boost down. Let's put on some, 
<laughs> um, 3D effects on a stacks. 100% not needed. Unrequired. But I could just hear it. It's like it's taking sound and just tearing it apart. And I was like, what are you doing? That is so fucking... That is just so fucking... Strange. I love that I have the ability to do it. And then you can leave all these settings on and then go... Now I'm hearing that. And now I'm hearing that. Clean. And straight. Narrowish tubes. Whatever the fuck I have this set to do right now. Can I just listen to this all day? Oh, it clipped. What did I do? What's clicking? There was a... I went next track and I went click. And bad things happened. Let's turn it on. Ooh. Did I blow it up? Maybe I blew it up. Interesting concept. Let's see. Oh, I may have overheated it. Did I overheat it? No. Zeos doesn't edit reviews either, so this is staying in. This is just me doing testing, and I am doing a lot of violent switching, but this should not be an issue for this unit. Let's see. One click. We wait. This is off. Nothing else is doing stupid shit. I think we're good. Let's go back to this just for testing purposes. I probably should put it on an input that's actually... Okay. I freaked it out and all the protection circuits came on and went, no! Don't damage me! So honestly, don't consider that a bad thing. If, if something clipped bad and nothing happened, I'd be more concerned. This shit's looking after itself and with the investment it is in this, I'd rather have it shut off every time I fuck up than let me fuck up and then cost me more, cost me a lot more. Especially with those, how the fuck do you even find 207 Ultras? You don't, you find 207s and make them Ultras. Okay, so volume down, unplug that. Let's put back on the IESL. Let's turn off all these enhancements. Tube is off. Let's actually go off the ultras and onto my much more expensive, which by the way, Bluetooth tracking thing for head tracking games. Talk about that later at some point. And um, Waves NX, if you want to look it up. The gold connector, and it's the same voltage as the 207 so you leave it at 580 and i'm leaving and maybe the ac termination would have helped let's put that on pro even though i didn't hear a difference let's put it on pro for fun leaving that where it is we're on the ican those are both turned down i have this font how this needs to go to like middle gain i had it all the way on low gain for the emergency checkup session Force of Nature, Sneak Chamber 2. I don't know why I have two Sneak Chambers, but Samurai Shampoo soundtrack just... Okay, balanced, which will be this. Which let's make balanced the correct thing. Spend, spend all the time on my stream making this cable. The difference, by the way, between going from this to that through these is remarkable. Give me the class I own every day. All day, er day. So now I've got the ICANN running, 
Dead flat, no fuckery. This mount's running. Solid state, no fuckery. And I'll turn this up. And these are actually more efficient than the 207s. Everything needs a little less power. Westworld soundtrack. Oh, in the comments, because I love talking about Westworld. No spoilers for season two in case that's out and I haven't watched. Because I don't know when these reviews come out. Thoughts on the show as a whole. Because frankly, I thought the first episode was like, alright. And then it's like, uh, and then the story came in and the oh, fuck. Mr. Robot Season 1, Westworld Season 1, best seasons of television ever. And Breaking Bad's a great show, but there's no singular season you could pull out and say this season. Th these two seasons. Freeze all motor functions. Probably my just, just... L700s, by the way. Just, just... Uh... Do I think the ICANN sounds better than my X7S and the Base X through my electrostats? Because, I mean, we have three very... Can I shut this off? I can. We have three very different things pushing my electrostatics. We've got the Aoun stack through a balanced output through the X7S and the Aoun is acting as a DAC. We've got the friggin' speaker amp hooked up through an old DAC, which is a $130 DAC, which I have no qualms with. And I think if you sat here listening, you'd have no qualms with it either. And then we've got this goddamn $1,700 monstrosity magic box that has all these knobs and switches that is specifically designed to pair with it through a special cable. And I could sit here switching through all three of them and enjoy all three of them. So the question is, does this switch set to ICANN? And I'll make sure we're on balance now. Because, oh my god, you got to balance. Even though I can't hear a difference between that output and that output. I'll set it to this output anyway. I think the only one that sounds slightly different is the base X. And I think it's just a power thing. Because, I mean, that's good. They're all powering this fine. These are 100% as good as I would expect my L700s to sound through anything. And I know this is not classic guitar and vocals, but I know these songs better than I know most people's and their names and who their dog is. So talking about it, Mozart, the piano concerto in D minor, K, or uh, K four six six second movement. I think Mozart was a goddamn BMW marketing. So now we've got very distant, quiet piano, feet away, super audiophile levels of of look how quiet that track is. It's just. Mm. There might be something to this with this, but again, it could be volume discrepancy. Uh, I'll put on the tubes for shits and giggles, and you could hear it's still playing. It's set to it's still playing. It's blinking because it's warming up the tubes. We had to reset it, so it's gonna keep playing the solid state. And then at some point, when it feels like it, like now, like now, this is great. But oh, we're silent goes red now we're on tubes and now I hear why you buy this to run electrostats because there are electrostatic tube amps and they're expensive as shit or they're made by stacks and frankly I didn't like the stacks ones when I heard them but this is a tube amp going through a transformer to make it a electrostatic tube amp static tube amp you're looking at it. It doesn't look like a electrostatic tube amp because there's no tubes showing, but trust me, there they are. Can you see them glowing in there? They're electrostatic tubes. 
So this has made a big dent in everyone's thought process. It should have made a big dent in everyone's thought processes. Because people love a matching stack. People like tubes. People like electrostatics. This is this makes perfect sense. Because, I mean, the alternatives are uh, Wu has that crazy big uh, flagship uh, electrostatic tube amp, tube energizer. Um, you got the Blue Hawaii, which is, I think, more money than my car is worth. It's a lot. It's not a little. It's a lot. And then you get this. I mean, I know there's probably more than that out there, but I'm going to keep it real simple. I know King Sound makes a few tube amps too, but King Sound. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're, here, here's the deal. Here's what I've, I've determined. This is an insane headphone amplifier. If you're going to buy that and you're going to spend the money, go for it. All right. I'm, I'm, you have more, more than my permission to do it. It has balanced in. It's got balanced out. When I'm done here, by the way, and I may click on the camera for 12 seconds because I did the same thing with the Freya. Okay, I'm done listening here. Let's go see how this works on speakers in my living room. Because I'm going to hook this up. I'm going to switch the tubes on. I'm going to listen to tube pre's in my living room. Because I have that ability. If you need... If any of the features on this make sense for you, by all means, I can pro. Alright? This is dumb. This doesn't need this, as I've shown you. You could have any... No but this is what I'd probably end up with for the most Swiss Army knife thing for electrostatics in the future. I, I may, I, I don't know, I may talk about, because it's, because it does the job of the wooey for double the money, but you get some, you get a couple of adjustments which I would never use, honestly, because it would never come off a of 580 volt. I'm always gonna have stacks. And I'm probably gonna set the impedance once, maybe move it once or twice if I try to power it with to the, the, the benefit of this, and it would be for me, is I would not have to use a speaker amp. I could use a headphone amp. It's a $300, the, actually the X7S I think has dropped to like near $200 for a class A balanced. And you can plug it in here and make magic come out of these. I wish the IESL was a little bit cheaper and this could stay exactly the same price and then it would be all, oh, buy this first, then buy this when you're crazy, or buy this first, and then buy this when you have electrostats. But they're both over a grand. So, not cheap. But I mean, this is, you're talking, when you say actually put the word flagship on something, you gotta be willing to pay that money. Pay the money. I just wish to, f I understand why this is a shitty remote. And by the way, did you actually watch it? If you, if you do click, 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 you can click it down. Very small increments. And if you hold it, she actually makes noise. Listen. It's going to be interesting in my living room. This is here just to teach a learning remote how to turn the volume up and down. I approve of both items. Price is up there, but you know, some, in the grand scheme of things, there's a bundle on Amazon. Both of these for the low, low price of $3,100. If you made it this far into this review to hear me say that, congratulations. I just wish they didn't slide on top of each other. Like it's like, I know why there's silicone there. It's isolating everything. I can't, I can't, I can't. That's it. I'd love it. If I had, I'd have a reason to be interested in this if I had crazy double balanced headphones. Like, oh, if I had nine, th cause you know how expensive like double helix wires are, which is basically what this would accommodate. Double helix wires are like, Three hundred dollars a foot. So of course, this is like nothing to someone who could who could be crazy enough to afford all their goddamn cables. The three D surround, very cool. If you're bored of all your headphones, like I said, you buy this. This unboards you of headphones. But what if I buy a solid state or a tube? Uh this this is a solid state and a tube and three D effects that are n all analog. This is a bragging rights amp, and it's worthy of those brags. I even like the way the light comes through that. So, okay, links to these in the description. Um, I'm probably gonna go pop it in my living room, see how that looks. Links to that wallpaper. 
because and I don't know whatever else I, I used I don't know if I'm gonna make, put a massive amount of links but certainly to this certainly that the patreon the twitch stream I did play with these a bit on the twitch stream with my uh, heiress when I was pulling it out I had it all wired up it was craziness in here so yeah thank you for watching I don't know how long this video is 45 I'm gonna say with edits because I had to edit out when the phone call happened 45 minutes 48 minutes 45 or 48 minutes? I don't know 48 minutes I'm going with but uh, when you get the most expensive stack that's what you do you spend time one last thing about the uh, I can you could tell IFI knows his customer base because I forgot to talk about this this comes with the unit and this is to plug the power brick in with a standard uh, computer style power cable and the reason they have this is so that people can use their five hundred thousand dollar power cables to power the power brick to power their headphone amplifier uh, this does not need to be in the box and I'm gonna use it now because I have power here already but uh, yeah that's final note on the IFI is they know somebody's gonna want to do this quick use our trillion dollar cable for this it'll be so much better so that's all and now I'm hooking it up in my living room and we'll see how that looks last time I'm talking about it and I should have done more on this in my 48 now minute long review uh, because if I put on the bass boost you get just a perfect little amount of bass Ooh. but more importantly the 3d effect holy shit that is such a weird feeling of it like just twisting things further away and it actually does click on when you have it through the speaker outs so I think it detects that So weird. I don't hate this. I don't hate this at all.